OK, so this is actually a new setup. Uh, I think this example might be done in the textbook, but we didn't do this in class because we keep running out of time whenever I want to bring in something like this. And this is actually a good example of how um, sometimes dealing with the voltage directly is a useful way to handle a problem. So let me describe the setup. So uh, well, I guess it's easy for you to see this way. Um, so this is what the setup looks like. Imagine you have a ring of charge. So let me draw a ring of charge like this. So here's the ring of charge. And let me say it's a ring charge of, uh, let me make it easy for myself, charge density lambda. So if you want you to relate it to the total charge, you could say that the total charge is lambda times uh, 2 pi r, where r, capital R, is the radius of the ring charge. Good? OK. And this is the question that someone could ask. And actually, at the level of this class, you could answer. It takes some work, but you could answer. So I define a special axis. Because if I'm asking for, so let me ask you this question. Does this situation look highly symmetric with a ring? It is somewhat symmetric, so um, let me ask you this question. Compare this ring case with this spherical, spherical case. Is this ring case as symmetric as the one with the sphere? No, right? There aren't as many symmetry operations you can apply here. Sphere, you can rotate it any way, and it's a symmetry operation. With the ring, there's really only one axis where you can rotate it around, and it will be symmetric. Any other axis you rotate it about, it won't be symmetric anymore, right? So with this ring charge, it's not highly symmetric. It has some symmetry. And this is how you will see it. If you try to apply Gauss's law, you will quickly realize that there is no Gaussian surface you can define, or at least the one you can define where you can pull out the electric field. That's why ring wasn't one of the three geometries that we went over. You cannot use Gauss's law. You have to, uh, if you want to calculate electric field, you have to do it the old fashioned, the difficult way. So this is the question that someone can still ask. And in fact, I think this is one of your homework questions. Um, define an axis that goes through the center of the ring, and you know, it's perpendicular to the plane and all that. And what someone could ask is, take a point at some distance, um, distance d. And someone could ask these two questions. What is the electric field at that point D? And what is the voltage at that point D? Good. Can everyone here imagine doing the electric field calculation? So if you, I think, I'm pretty sure I actually asked this in homework. So you know, in the homework, this is how you do do it. You know, you um, if to find the electric field, you do consider contribution from different points, and this is one where one place where you, you you use the idea of pairwise cancellation. You think about contribution from this part here, match it up with the contribution from this part here. Contribution from above, it will give you electric field that looks like this. Contribution below will give you electric field that looks like this. So you realize that electric field, um, so this is the net electric field from these two contributions. You imagine taking pair of points all the way around this. And you going through all of that, you realize only component of electric field that survives is along the x axis. And then you integrate over the whole ring to get the total ele electric field. If this, this doesn't sound utterly familiar, do the homework. This homework is already posted. You should be working through this homework. Good? I'm pretty sure this, yeah, this is one of the homework questions. So for the time today, what I want to look at is, what if someone asked for not the electric field, but the voltage? How would you answer that? And you, know, you could find the electric field and then do this integral, and then do it that way. That's a valid way to do it. It'll give you the correct answer. But what I want to tell you now is that there is actually a shortcut. 
There's a quicker way to do this. Any idea the quicker way to do it? Do people remember superposition principle? I think the first time I mentioned it in this class, I told you it's gonna come up often. That's why we give it such a grandiose name for something that's saying something so simple. What does superposition principle say? It applies with the forces, but I want it stated generally. Yeah, so combine the effect of two different things producing something. It could be force, it could be electric field. Um, superposition principle says that you just add them together. You don't do anything complicated with it. And what, I, what I'm happy to tell you is that superposition principle applies to voltages also. As in, if you want contribution to voltage from this point here, and then contribution to voltage from this point here, all you have to do is simply add them up. Okay. Let me write it down in symbols. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say that total voltage, so voltage at point D, it's going to be the contribution to voltage from multiple different points. It's going to be, so at this point here, the voltage here is produced by all these different charges. So it's going to be contribution of all these uh, infinitesimal voltage contribution from those different points added up over the entire ring. Yeah. I want you to be careful how the way, what this symbol means right now is different from how I meant it when I derived this formula. You know. So all this symbol is saying is that I'm adding up stuff. When I was driving this, what I was adding up was the uh, change in voltage over small intervals, right? Here, what I'm adding up is not intervals. What I'm adding up are different portions of the charge that's this generating it. Yeah? So uh, I want you to keep that distinction in mind because when I write down something like this, I haven't really said anything. This is my equivalent of saying, I'm going to integrate. <laughs> now, you have to explain how you are going to set it up. So here, remembering what this symbol represents right now, what I have to represent is what is the small contribution to the voltage at this point due to a small amount of charge, dq here. So that's what I'm going to write down. So this is dv, small amount of contribution to the voltage. Well, I look at this formula, think about it. Can I use it? I think I can use it, right? So I use it. So it's going to be the small amount of charge in this small section, dq, divided by four pi epsilon naught. Those are just constants. I'm just copying it down. The symbol I have to be careful with is this r. What does R represent in that symbol, in that formula? Distance, right? So here, if I just use R or D, that wouldn't work, right? What's the expression for distance from this point, or from this point to the point where I'm considering? What is formula for this? Yeah, use Pythagorean theorem, right? So this is d, this is r, so this is going to be square root of r squared plus d squared. Okay. So, all right, square root of r squared plus d squared. Ah, is this going to give a complicated integral again? We'll see. So we are going to integrate this over the whole ring. Mm. All right. Um, as, okay, so I'm integrating this over the ring. Hmm. Does anything on the right hand side change as I do this, uh, add up this quantity over the ring? Yeah, it shouldn't change. So if you are thinking that here the answer is that this whole thing is equal to the total amount of charge, lambda 2 pi r, lambda 2 pi r divided by 4 pi epsilon naught square root of r squared plus d squared. 
If you're saying that this is the answer, yeah, that, that, that's actually the answer. But uh, for those of you who might be skeptical, let me demonstrate it, just going through the actual rigorous steps. So when you are integrating over the ring, this is what you have to do. You have to select a parameter that will allow you to go over the entire ring. Here, the natural parameter to do it is the angle theta, right? You can start at, uh, out at theta equal to zero, go over a whole angle of two pi, and that will give you the entire ring. So this is how I'm going to set up this integral. I have to first write out dq. What this dq in terms of theta will be is charge density, lambda, times I need a length that's expressed in terms of theta or d theta. And that length will be the radius r times d theta. Everyone okay with that? Yes, this is the small segment of this ring that's represented by d theta. All right, so that's what I'm gonna write down here. The integral over the ring is theta going from zero to two pi. DQ is replaced by this, lambda times R D theta over four pi epsilon naught square root of R squared plus D squared. And you know, to quell, uh, crunch, no, to quiet your mathematical conscience, you go through each one of these symbols do any of this change as theta changes. Lambda doesn't change, R doesn't change, none of these change. Which means this integral over d theta, it's equivalent to just multiplying by two pi. And when you do that, this is what you get. So this is my, um, this is my formula for voltage of the uh, voltage of the ring as a function of distance d. So um, I want you to know how much simpler this is. I didn't, so when I'm doing this uh, thing for the electric field, it, I guess it's not that much complicated, but I at least had to worry about the directions and all that stuff. When I'm doing it for the uh, voltage, I don't even have to worry about directions because this is a scalar quantity. As long as I'm convinced that superposition principle applies, I simply add them up. So, so that's it, and uh, I'm not going to go through the actual calculation, but let me tell you that there is a way to calculate the electric field if you know the, the full expression for voltage. So, um, it, so I guess we don't use it as much as, as often as we should. Um, it comes down to using this expression here. In calculus terms, this is what it is. The x component of electric field is minus the partial derivative of voltage with, res with respect to x. Which means once you know the full expression for voltage, then you can use that to get back to electric field. So here, you have the full expression for voltage. Uh, you know, if I define my axis this way, you know, this is x and this could be y, then what I, the formula for voltage I have is V of x is equal to all of that, two pi lambda r over four pi epsilon naught square root of r squared plus x squared, right? Then all I need to do to find the x component of electric field is this. I take this take the minus the derivative with respect to x, that's going to give me the x component of electric field. Yeah, so this operation, essentially, you know, if you want you to find the electric field, it turns one potentially complicated integral into a simpler integral plus a derivative. And you guys know derivative is always easier. Um, one caution though, could you use this to figure out the y component of electric field? Here you can't because you only really know voltage as a function of x. As in, if I moved slightly off the axis, I don't know what the voltage will be. 
So if you want the y component, then you have to exp expand this out. You have to actually derive the expression for voltage as a function of x and y. And it, it, you know, that would take more work. That's why in lower division classes, we never ask you electric field and voltage off of the axis. And on the axis, you can make a symmetry argument that y component is 0. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's a voltage over ring charge. 